Have you ever tried to install a VST plugin only to figure out that it doesn't work or it's not even anywhere in your DAW? Well, I'm going to give you the four things that I do to successfully install my VST plugins. That's coming up on Home Music Studio One. Hey everyone, Dave Maxey here with Home Music Studio One. You can also find me online at homemusicstudio1.com. This is the place where you can learn how to produce professional audio and you can do that even on a limited budget. You are officially listening to episode number 28. You might also be watching this episode on the YouTube feed as well. And so welcome back to the episode. Welcome to the show. Glad to be back doing another episode with you. I'm just going to jump right into where I want to go today and what I want to talk to you about. I want to share with you the four simple things that I do that allow me to successfully install my VST plugins virtually every time. There's always that one exception, but these four things are going to work 99% of the time. Let me give them to you quickly, and then we'll just kind of begin to unpack these. So the first thing I do in order to install my VST plugins is, number one, making sure I get the right file. Number two, making sure that I put the file that I'm downloaded for my VST in the right place on my computer. Number three, making sure that my DAW, my recording software, knows exactly where I've placed that VST. And then number four, I need to give my DAW a chance to rescan that plugin folder. And so I'm going to show you exactly what these four things are, and I'm going to demonstrate doing this here uh, with Reaper, although these principles are going to work with whatever DAW you're using, and we are going to download uh, and install the uh, Vox and Go and Spec, which is a, a and Spec analog uh, spectrum analyzer, basically. And so we're going to we're going to install this into Reaper. I'm going to show you the four things that I do. We'll kind of unpack these a little bit. So number one, making sure you get the right file. This is probably the biggest mistake in the, the emails that I get. Hey, Dave, try to install this plugin. It's not working. What's going on? I, I load my DAW. It's not even there. Or the plugin is there, but every time I click on it, I get, if you're using Windows, the, the blue screen of death, or it just freezes. So uh, getting the right file is absolutely uh, the first thing you need to make sure to do. And so in this case, this is a free VST that I'm going to download, or I've actually already downloaded this from Anspec, uh, and I've got uh, a copy of the file that we're going to be installing today uh, on my desktop. That's right here. But getting the right file starts with first understanding, obviously, what OS you're using, if you're using Mac or Windows. In my case, I'm using Windows. And then the biggest question here, is it a 32-bit version of a DAW that you have installed on your operating system, or is it a 64-bit version of the DAW? Now, um, in your case, if you're using a 32-bit operating system, then chances are you're also running a 32-bit version of your DAW. However, you, you might also uh, be running a 64-bit version of your OS, in which case you have the ability and the option to run a 64-bit version of your DAW. In my case, I'm using Windows 64-bit, and uh, with that in mind, in order just to maximize the full potential of my system, I'm also using the 64-bit version of Reaper. You can see that right here. So in my case, I uh, am choosing to make sure that I get the 64-bit version of the plugin that I am using. I don't want to try to uh, install the 32-bit version in a 64-bit version DAW or the other way around. Now, there's, there's one exception to this rule. Uh, if your DAW supports what's called 32-bit bridging, and in this case, if you uh, look here at my plugins here, uh, first of all, I do. I did a quick search here before this cast here. If I type in VOX, you'll see that the Vox and Go plugins. The only two I have is the Vox and Go Span and the Tube Amp. And so uh, the plugin we're going to be installing and spec is not on my system. But if I look at just my my full VST folder, you're going to notice that uh, next to a few of these it says X86. Here's the Density uh, MK3 X86 by Variety of Sound. Uh, there's the Ferric TDS by Variety of Sound X86. Yet, if you look at the vast majority of these, they don't say that X86 next to them. So what is happening? What is going on here? 
Uh, well, uh, bridge mode is something that Reaper does very well. And what this is essentially doing is it is giving me the ability to run a 32-bit version of a plugin in my 64-bit version DAW. And so your DAW might support bridge mode. It may not, but if it does, that is the only exception to installing a 32-bit version of a plugin in a 64-bit version DAW. Otherwise, uh, you're going to want to try and use a, a 64-bit uh, plugin VST with your 64-bit version DAW. Definitely don't attempt to install a 64-bit version of a plugin in a 32-bit version of a DAW because it's just not going to work. In my case with Reaper, uh, let's just say I load this Epic Verb uh, plugin from uh, Ferric TDI, or I'm sorry, from uh, Variety of Sound. And so it says right up here, the X86 bridge. And what that is telling me is this 32-bit version plugin is running in bridge mode. Reaper is bridging the gap from the 32-bit version in order to make that work on my 64-bit uh, DAW that I'm using here. And so you can see that again, I've got the 64-bit version of Reaper. So uh, in your case, you might have bridge mode. And if you do, then you have a little bit more flexibility if uh, it has the ability to run bridge mode stable. Uh, Reaper does. Reaper does a really good job for the most part, uh, as long as you've got a plugin written well. Uh, in this case, the variety of the sound plugins work very well, I find, in 32-bit bridge mode. And so uh, if that's your option, that's the only exception to this rule. Otherwise, 32-bit DAW, 32-bit VST, 64-bit DAW, 64-bit VST. Now, the other consideration when it comes to uh, getting the right file is, are you downloading an archived file or are you downloading a self-extracting installation file? Now, if I go back to uh, the, the uh, site here, let's check this out here, uh, Vox and Go and Spec. If I run over here and uh, we just take a look at uh, the options that we have to download the file. If you're using Mac, uh, obviously you can select audio unit or VST. In my case, um, I am running uh, you know, the 64-bit version of Windows. And this is providing me, when I clicked on download and I downloaded that file, it is actually a, a uh, an archived file. It's a .zip file. In other words, within this folder, there are other files. All the plugin folders that I have are compressed inside this folder. And so there's a, another option that I need to follow in order to get the right files. You might also be downloading a, a plugin that has a self-extracting uh, self-install file. And if that is the case, then you don't need to unzip that file. You're just going to click that file and it is going to make the necessary changes to your computer in the registry. And it's also going to put the necessary uh, folders, uh, plugin folder, as well as the actual files within that folder in a certain place on your computer. Uh, but you need to know whether you're dealing with a self-extracting file or a compressed file that you need to unzip. In my case, I need to unzip this file. I need to unextract the folders within there. So in Windows, I'm just going to right-click on that. And uh, I've got a couple different options, but I'm just going to use the default build into Windows, and that's just extract all. And uh, when I do that, it gives me just a quick uh, little rundown of where you're going to put that. I'm just going to click on extract and leave that in the same place as it, as it was, which was the desktop. And now I've got this folder. Now within this folder, I have a .dll file. I've got some other licensing agreements and uh, a, a few other options that are showing up within this folder. The most important file that I need to understand is the .dll when it comes to Windows. Uh, this is the actual VST. But in my case, uh, I'm gonna have everything within inside this folder is now on my desktop. I'm just gonna keep it all together. So I'm gonna do something just to simplify things a little bit. I just right clicked on the folder and I'm gonna click rename and I'm just gonna shorten up uh, the folder that I just extracted outside of this zip file. I'm just gonna call it Vox and Go and Spec. That just allows me to you know, simplify the name of that and know exactly what's going on. Uh, those of you that are using Mac, uh, you may the, the extension for your VST might be .dmg, uh, depending on what it is that you're using. Uh, those of you that are using Mac, you can let me know. I don't use Mac, so just verify what that is. But at the end of the day, you're going to have a file if you're going to have a self-extracting file in in within that folder i'm sorry you're gonna have a folder that has all the necessary files that you need for your plugin and so that brings us to step two uh, we need to make sure that we put that in the right place on our computer now, if this was a self-install file, it's going to automatically install these in a certain place on your computer. You need to make sure you figure out where that self-installation file is installing 
whether it's a .dll or a DMG or whatever your your plugin uh, extension is, you need to make sure that you know exactly where uh, these are going on your computer. Now, what I do to simplify it in my case uh, is I've got uh, a couple different options on my computer, but I do uh, two different things. Number one, uh, if I'm using a free VST, I use a, a, a program called Dropbox. Dropbox is just basically a cloud online backup. You can Google that if you don't know what that is. But within there, I've got two folders. Uh, one, uh, well, within my my Dropbox folder, I have a folder called free VST plugins, and then I've got them separated into my 64-bit as well as my 32-bit versions of those plugins. And so anytime I install a plugin, in order to put those files in the right place, I know that if it's a, you know, if it's a free version of a plugin, I'm gonna put that in one of these two places in my Dropbox folder. If it's a 32-bit, I'm gonna shove it in the x86 folder. If it's 64-bit, I'm gonna put it in the 64-bit folder. Now, does it matter where you put your VSTs? Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, we're gonna find out with step three. Uh, the only thing that really matters is that your DAW knows exactly where this is. Uh, my recommendation is to not have four or five different directories where you have VSTs. I basically use two. I use this free VST folder that I've got subcategorized, uh, as well as if you look down here on my program files, I also have a folder that is just simply called uh, VST plugins. This is typically where I will put any paid plugin uh, that I buy, like in this case, the Addictive Drums VSTi. So uh, whatever your case, doesn't necessarily matter. You just need to know exactly where those files are at on your computer. So uh, I'm just gonna make this simple. Uh, you know, if I go to my desktop, I've got this folder that we just renamed, and it is a 64-bit version of the plugin. And so I'm just very simply gonna drag that into my plugin folder directory, my free VSTs, 64-bit. I'm just gonna drag that over. And now I know that uh, everything inside this folder is what the plugin needs to run, uh, or at least to full run. Technically, it only needs this .dll, but there's some other things in there we'll just leave there. Uh, on Windows, that is. And so I've, I know I've got my folder in the right place, and uh, that is that, that's step two, making sure that you know exactly where this place is, putting that file, those folders in the right place. That brings me to step three. The next thing I need to do is make sure that my DAW knows exactly where that folder is that I just put that VST. So in Reaper, uh, again, this might be a little different in your DAW, but I'm gonna go to the options menu, and then I'm gonna go click on preferences. And on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna click on plugins and then VST. And then up toward the upper middle, uh, you're gonna see it says VST plugin paths. And it also tells me that they can be multiplied, they can be separated by semicolons. All that means is you can have more than one directory where your VST plugins are installed or your plugins. Uh, and in this case, they just need to be separated. These are the actual path to the file itself. In other words, where is that uh, plugin uh, folder located? This is where it's telling me I've got the first one here is my typical paid plugins. And then you also see uh, my C users, Dave, Dropbox, free VST, and then X64, uh, as well as I've actually got a third, which is the same directory there, but it just shows the X86 at the end of it. So I've got three directories keeping my 64-bit separated from my 32-bit version of my plugin. So I've let Reaper know, hey, here is where uh, I, my VSTs are. Uh, this is another major issue. A lot of a lot of times, uh, you know, we go to install a plugin and then we put it in a folder and we think, well, it's on my computer. Why doesn't it work? Well, step number three is making sure your DAW knows exactly where you put that VST. Very important. Uh, if your DAW has no clue of where uh, these directories are or where that new plugin is, it has no uh, ability to run that plugin. And so that simply brings us to step number four. Very simple. And again, if you're using a different DAW, this uh, may be by a different name, but step number four is rescanning that plugin folder, making sure that your DAW doesn't just know where that folder is, but it rescans the files within that folder to pick up any new plugins you may have just placed in there. 
Now, some DAWs do this uh, at startup. I believe Reaper does too. But if you've got your DAW running, uh, I have two different options here. I can rescan, and what that means is just going to rescan and look if there's anything new inside those plugin folders, or I can clear the cache and uh, scan. And so, clear cache is just kind of an extra ability. It's basically going to, if, if you had any crashes, you had any issues, you had uh, anything that there were settings that were saved within your DAW, it's just going to clear all those and relook at that folder again. And uh, it's going to pick up everything that was there as well as what is now new. And it's going to make sure that your DAW is able to recognize that. So I know we've got our, our new plugin, our new VST. We took it from our desktop and uh, we copied it into the right folder, which is this folder right here. And then from there, uh, we told Reaper, hey, make sure you look for new plugins inside that folder. And so I'm now going to click on my last, the last step here on clear cache and rescan. And now this is just going through my my free, well, it's actually looking at all my plugin directories. In this case, uh, anything that is new, it's also going to uh, make sure that that's recognized as well as clear the cache for anything that exists there. And uh, this may take a while, depending on how many plugins you have and the speed of your machine. Uh, hopefully it won't take too long here uh, on my machine here, but it's just going ahead and it is looking at uh, the plugin folders and recognizing if there's anything new within those folders. So we'll give that just a minute uh, to complete this and then we'll see if our plugin is actually uh, installed properly. Okay, so there you go. So now we've got our, our cache cleared uh, and it has rescanned that plugin directory. So let's see, now if we click OK on our menu, let's just go to add this plugin here. I'm gonna click on my VST. I'm going to type VOX for Vox and Go, and uh, there we go. It shows me right now that my Anspec plugin is now being recognized by Reaper. I'm going to double-click that, and that installs that here. And let's just play a little piece of this audio just to make sure our plugin is working. You'll also notice there is no uh, x86 bridge mode notification. This is the 64-bit version, and it does appear to be loaded just fine. So let's just play a little piece of this audio and uh, just to verify that it works. Okay, there you go. Uh, the Anspec uh, plugin is working very well. Uh, and so those are the simple four things that I do every time I install VST. And I'm confident that if you follow those processes, whatever DAW you're using, the principles are the same, Whatever, whether it's Mac or PC. Uh, a quick recap, make sure you get the right file, 32-bit or 64-bit. Know if it's a self-extracting file or if it is a zip file or a compressed file. If it's a compressed file, then you need to extract the files within that folder and then uh, put them in the right place. Number two, make sure that those plug-in folders and files are in the right place on your hard drive on your computer. Number three, make sure you DAW, your DAW knows exactly where those VSTs are installed. Number four, make sure that your DAW has the opportunity to rescan that plug-in folder. That might be as simple as restarting your DAW or you may have to manually click on clear cache or rescan plugins folders. Might be a different name depending on the DAW that you're using, but the principle is the same. So hopefully, guys, this has been helpful to you. If you've got any questions, let me know. Throw me an email at dave at homemusicstudio1.com. You can also head on over to homemusicstudio1.com forward slash contact and get a hold of me that way. And you can also leave a message in the comment section here. I do my best to read as, as much of those as I possibly can. Make sure you subscribe if you are listening uh, to this in iTunes as well as if you're watching the feed here in YouTube. And then uh, lastly... If you've yet to join literally the hundreds that are part of the online community and part of my free newsletter, getting great tips like this delivered directly to their inbox as they come, head on over to freerecordingtools.com and you can throw your email address in there. Join us as part of the online community. And just as a thank you from me to you for having you part of the community, I'll send you a copy of my free ebook that answers one of the, the most popular questions I get, and that is called Understanding Compression in the Home music studio love to have you part of the online community with that until next time this is david maxi with home music studio one